the Sonic Society's 400th regular season episode, and over 525 total broadcasts. That's a lot of great audio entertainment in a weekly one-hour show. We'll need to rendezvous with the heart of audio space. And where is that? Where all audio drama intersects the most weakened part of the entire podiosphere. The Sonic Society. And by extension, Electric Vicuna Productions. We will set course. Yes, but on the way we'll course by Voices in the Wind from David Farquhar with Dark Road to Nowhere. And then... And then... We will arrive just in time in society space for the 400th episode, which includes an original show from the Wavefront series entitled Black Knight, starring Joe Stofko, Russell Gold, and Tonya Malayevich, and introducing Pete Lutz. Warning. Warning. We have two entities that have escaped from detention. Quickly, find them. Scanning. We've arrived at Voices in the Wind, Dark Road to Nowhere. Alert the YouTube. Drop marker. And after, onwards to society, subspace, and victory. Victory. <laughs> Don't be afraid to come in. I'm brewing up something special for Halloween. It's my favorite time of the year. Oh, there you are, Igor. Say hello to our guests. Yes, Mr. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sounds like the brew is ready. Igor, hand me that beaker over there. Yes, Master. Beaker, beaker, to Master. Yes. Sorry, Master. Oh, Igor. While Igor is mopping up the mess, I have a little Halloween story for you. Please lower the lights, sit down, and prepare yourself for a tale of mystery and intrigue along the dark road. <laughs> Where are we? It's a shortcut. Don't worry. Simon, don't you think you're driving a little too fast? I thought you liked it fast, Felicia. But it's so dark. And the road's so curvy. Oh, I know how to handle curves. <laughs> It's midnight on all country. Happy Halloween, everybody. Has the boogeyman got you yet? In the forecast, it's thunderstorms. And now, for the news headlines, another young woman disappears. Simon, look out! An old woman crossing the road! Ah! <gasps> <sighs> Felicia, are you okay? I think so. I hit that old woman. I've got to see if she's okay. You're bleeding, Simon. Oh, the door is jammed. Oh, I think I can climb out through the window. Where are we? We're in a ditch. Can you get out? My seatbelt's jammed. Here's my Swiss Army knife. Cut it. Ow! Be careful, it's sharp. I cut my finger. Here, take my hand. Can you walk? I think so. I've got to find that old woman. She rolled right up on the hood and smashed the windshield. She's probably dead. No one could survive that. I was going too fast. I don't see her. 
Maybe she was thrown. Here's our skid marks. Let's look by the side of the road. Maybe she crawled off. It's so dark. Everything's all overgrown. Ouch! Barbed wire. It looks like it runs all along the road. It's not over here. She can't have just disappeared. Look, the moon's coming out from behind the clouds. It's a full moon. Halloween moon. Simon, look up the road. It can't be. The old woman. She's staring at us. Hey! Are you okay? Hey! Where'd she go? She must have stepped off the road into the shadows. But no one could have survived being hit like that. Well, she didn't look like she needed help. She looked just fine. Let's get out of here. I don't think you can drive out of that ditch. Well, I can try. I guess we're not going anywhere. What was that? Well, what do you think? Somebody's dog. Simon, there it is! Get out of here! What was that? A dog or something, a coyote. What are we gonna do? Do we have any choice? Start walking. That old woman must be going someplace. I'm scared. It's okay, Felicia. The old woman probably lives just up ahead. She'll help us. If she's not mad because we hit her. Simon, look. It's just a cat. Felicia! It's not wild. See, it wants me to pick it up. Oh. What? It, it's covered in blood. Put it down. It's hurt. Okay, but put it down. Simon, it needs help. But what if it has rabies? I bet it got hit by a car. Poor thing. Can't move its back legs. Let's just leave it, okay? It's probably gonna die. There's nothing we can do. We can't just leave it. Put it down, Felicia. We can't carry it for the next ten miles. I can try. Put it down. Felicia, look at you. You're covered in blood. So? I'm leaving. If you want to stay here, that's fine. Will you come back for me? Someone's out there. Who's there? Who are you? Why the gun? What do you want? Hey there, little chickens. Why don't you put my kitty cat down on the ground? I think that means now. Oh my god, are you crazy? What do you do to my cat? You just blew its head off! It was hurting. Now what do you do to it? Nothing. We just found it. It was injured. Yeah. What are you doing? What do you think? Look, our car broke down. We hit a... Shh! You hit what? A tree. Do you have a phone? I'll pay. Ha! Huh. Come on, little chickens. Where are you taking us? Home. Ma will cook you up something. We don't want to impose. It's so late. Ma don't sleep. If we can just use the phone. Got no phone. What? Ain't got no phone. No wires. Don't worry. I'll take care of you. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. What? Nothing. Got a shortwave radio, though. Here we are. What is this place? Now, nothing. It used to be my daddy's coffin factory. <laughs> What's so funny? Coffin. Don't you think they're funny? Is it locked? Nah, I just like Ma to know we're coming. We're not really hungry. You will be. Maybe we should just keep walking since you don't have a phone. No, you'll disappoint Ma. Size ain't safe out there. All kinds of crazies running around, I bet. You can stay the night. I insist. Well, it doesn't seem like we have much choice. Come into the parlor. Dusty. Ma don't clean too much anymore. Arthritis stiffs her up. Why don't you wait here in this here room? I'll get some grub. I'm not hungry. Me neither. Suit yourself. Simon, I think he locked the door. You're right. Simon, look. Coffins? He said they used to make them here. Ah! What? Look, in the corner. An old woman. Simon. Hi there. Simon. It looks like she's been dead a long time. Almost a mummy. Cat on her lap is alive, though. Alicia, it's the same cat you found injured by the road. But he shot that one. Blew its head off. I know. I'm scared. Simon. Felicia, you, you've got to keep yourself together. Simon. 
We're gonna get out of here. We are gonna get out of here, okay? Okay. I don't plan on needing one of these coffins. But he's got a gun! We'll make it. The windows all have bars on them. That's odd. People don't usually break into coffin factories. Simon, look! What? A door! Behind that coffin! Let's move it. <laughs> Heavy! <laughs> ah! Stupid cat! I don't hurt it! It's locked. Are you sure? Maybe it just hasn't been used in a while. I, I think I got it! A hallway. I wonder where it goes. It's too dark. Wherever it leads, it's gotta be better than here. You coming? Yeah. Hold my hand. I can't see a thing. Follow the wall with your arm. What was that? A bat. That means there's a way out. We're gonna make it. It seems like we're going down. I don't think so. Ow! A door! I noticed. I found the handle. It's hard to open. I'll help. Dear God. People in cages. It's a dungeon. They all look demented. They're all young women. Look, those two are almost skeletons. They're starving them. This is sick. I'm gonna try talking to them. Hello? Are you alright? Maybe she didn't hear you. Who are you? Why are you here? I think they're all insane. Kept like animals. We've got to help them. We will. Look, her clothes aren't as tattered as the others. She's afraid of us. We won't hurt you. We'll get you out of here. What's your name? Mary's dead. Mary's dead. Mary's dead. That's awful, but we're gonna help you. Mary's dead. Mary's dead. I don't know how we can get her out without a key. Mary's dead. Simon? I see you found my collection. Your collection? Remember the news, Felicia, about all the young women disappearing? Yes. This must be them. They're mine. They're my collection. My little chickens. You keep them here? Felicia, remember, he's got a gun. I got a place for you, girl. But not for you. I see. We can only keep hands. What are you doing? I'm gonna shoot him. No use keeping him around suffering. That'd just be cruel. What about keeping these women locked in cages? Starving them to death? Don't make him mad, Felicia. You don't understand. No! Felicia! Help me, Simon! Let go! Okay, I've got the gun. Are you okay? Yeah, you? Where are the keys? What keys? To the cages! Where are the keys to the cages? I don't have them. I'm just a keeper. Where are the keys? I don't have them. She did. It's the old woman. The one we killed when we hit her with our car. Except she doesn't look very dead. I got him down. Move back or I'll shoot. Felicia. Where is she? Where'd she go? <laughs> you don't know. You don't know nothing. There's the cat. Now she's the old woman again. Ow! Why'd you drop the gun? It burnt my hands! Pick up the gun, Howie. Got it. Now you, Felicia, in that cage. Better do as he says, Felicia. I'll be okay. Now for him. Don't, Don't shoot. shoot. What? Ow! Yeah, I heard! I heard! We'll keep him! We'll keep him! What are you gonna do with me? In there! Time passes. It always does. How long have I been here? The old woman cat creature thing can change her shape at will. She drinks the blood of the young women and the collection of them keeps growing. I try to take care of Felicia, feed her, wash her. I try to take care of all of them. I can see what's happening. I'm not that stupid. We didn't hit that old woman by accident. She selected us. She wanted Felicia. 
and she wanted me. I'm becoming the new keeper. energy ranges the endless reaches of space and time. Different frequencies lap the shores of the lonely rocks, crashing in silence against the endless sounds. Stories from a million possible realities, all coalescing into a single wavefront. Transmission begins. Human ingenuity is as measureless as the stars in the heavens. Simply provide a barrier and see how many ways a human being will circumvent it. Wealthy industrialist and adventurer Tanner McBride and his companions Lisa Kincaid and Judd Chapman are about to slip towards an unknown barrier beyond human experience. Base Control, this is Shuttle Namtar arriving at Alpha Coordinates. Two minutes, twenty-four seconds. Over. This is Base Control. We read you loud and clear on course Niner Niner Four One Z. Fuel capacity within margins. Approach is good. You've cleared the troposphere with all gauges reading green. Over. Verified, Base Control. Going dark until re-entry. Namtar out. Do you think they bought it? Hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> don't get cocky. We're hardly out of the woods yet. Where's our target? I don't see it on the scope. We're at the right coordinates. You heard base we're control. We're at the right spot. Jesus, Judd. It just because we're in the right place doesn't mean it's at the oh, right... Oh, there place. it is! I swear it wasn't there a moment ago. Now it's like... It... Just phased into view. <laughs> I can't believe it! I know this is what we wanted to... It's yeah. right here where you said it would be, Lisa. I know. Black Knight. <laughs> I never doubted you for a moment. <laughs> That's not what you said three months ago. <laughs> <clears throat> Since when did you need a knock to come into my office? When I need your entire attention to see what I bought on my trip to L.A. <laughs> you really don't want me to work any longer, do you? <sighs> this little thing? It's that distracting? Little is an overstatement. I've got goosebumps that cover more <laughs> skin. Flatterer? But honestly, I need you to focus for a moment. Uh, that's my dear Lisa. Always operating on at least two planes. <sighs> All right. What do you have in mind? Have you heard of Black Knight? I gather you didn't interrupt asteroid mining <laughs> feasibility reports to play a game of chess. Uh, maybe later. <clears throat> but in this case, I'm speaking of the 50-year-old rarely detected ship in polar orbit. 50-year-old? That we know of. In polar orbit? Mm -hmm. That's when a satellite goes from pole to pole, not east-west crossways. Longitude, not latitude. What's so interesting about a satellite that goes pole to pole? You've heard of a 50-year-old satellite before on a polar orbit? I never knew about polar <laughs> orbit. There's not... Not? Not a satellite? Uh, that old, that goes... At least not one of ours. What do you mean, not one of ours? 
Ruskies? Tanner, we don't call them Ruskies anymore. And no, much further than that. Japs. Even less. Those cultural slurs. <sighs> much further than that. You don't mean... Oh, that's ridiculous. There's no such thing as little green men. Maybe. But big black spaceships flashing in and out of radar for decades. And that, my darling, is a thing such as it is. I know better than to ask if you've done your homework. Uh, that's it, huh? You do. And yes, it is. So, what do you suppose we do about it? Well, and there's this billionaire slash speculator I know. I say we find it and dock with it. Dock with it? Whatever for? <laughs> Tanner Eugene McBride. Oh, I hate when you call me by my middle name. Feels like... I'm in trouble. Dan, are you Jean McBride? You're the fourth richest man in the world. Fifth. <laughs> fourth? I don't count Gerard Ingentier, that French fop as You one. just hate that he took our mineral rights in Afghanistan. Not the point. Why did I agree to date you? Uh, because of my undeniable charm? <laughs> no. That was a bonus. And you know I don't give a damn about your money. I know, I know. I I'm with you, Tanner. Because in your heart, you've always been an adventurer. I know you haven't sailed around the world in two decades. Or explored the bottom of the ocean in four years. Or scaled Makalu since your salad days. Or ziplined across the Amazon, but... You aren't dead yet. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. Hey, but what's a zip line? And ever since you were a kid, space was your dream. You wanted to be an astronaut before you wanted to be a typhoon. A tycoon? <laughs> How did you... Please. I came to you from the CIA. Remember? A woman has her ways. <laughs> Uh, tycoon, typhoon, I don't know. I, I always mix those up. Do you expect me to make a logical response while you're on my lap? I only expect the correct response, logical or not. All right. I know why you brought this up now. Uh-huh. Our shuttle launch. Exactly. Lisa, we're sending a manned mission to the upper atmosphere to test engines of our own design. A manned mission? You're going. Me? <laughs> but I couldn't. Are you or are you not the man who broke the twin prop record back in 74? Uh, are you calling me old? Oh, uh, don't play the wounded gray fox. You know as well as I do that you designed the shuttle's flight controls. You should fly her the first time. And now you have reason to. What do you mean? I mean, my darling man, that you wouldn't go up to just pilot the spaceship to the top of the sky. You would fly to dock with an alien craft. Hmm. You know me so well, do you? Maybe we'll get lucky and come back with some otherworldly tech. And who am I supposed to trust on this secret mission? I'll need a crew. Judd the Chapman, of course. And Judd and I go way back college days. He's one of the oldest VPs on the board, too. Then it makes sense. See? I'm not just a pretty face with a Bond girl body. You wouldn't be chief of operations if you were. <laughs> yeah, no matter who you sleep with. I guess you want to tag along as well? Oh, me? I don't know if I could. I have so much... Lisa? Uh, it took you long enough to ask. <laughs> <laughs> you know we're going to have to move up the schedule. Move up the schedule. According to our prediction models, based upon cross-reference sightings of 15 communication satellites, NASA, and some Soviet detector satellites, we've got about a month or two less than we originally calculated. Mm, let's see, your breakdown of the time frame? Just happened to have it here. What else do you keep balled up in your bra? Work first, Mr. McBride, work first. <laughs> You were right on the money, Lisa. Smart money. I can't wait to get my hands on that tech. Assuming we can get in to look at it. We have a diamond-tipped drill, laser-torch, and titanium-bladed chainsaws. 
can't imagine anything we can't get into. I couldn't imagine this months ago. Uh, coming into final approach. What have you got for me, Lisa? Scanning. No energy output. Nothing. Can't even see a door, really. Very few lines and sharp angles. Judd? Me neither. Not a rivet or a seam on this thing. Like the entire hose made of some kind of wrapped black acrylic. Can you even see a vent for it? Coming up as close as I can. Suit up and prepare the umbilical. Aye, aye, sir. Switch on helmet floodlights. Is there any atmosphere in here? Hey, don't point that slide right into my eyes. I, I don't have the sun visor down. Sorry. Hey, put that away. We don't know what we'll find here. Exactly. No point in putting us all in jeopardy. Uh, for now, let's keep calm, shall we? All weapons holster. Agreed. All right. Well... Walls are as smooth inside as they are out. Where's the controls? I, I, I don't even see cables or stuck to Floors like a stone cave. Think it was grown here or carved? Reminds me of college. What do you mean? You forgot Pledge Week? <laughs> uh, the great Sigma Pi panty ray. The stuff of legend. Uh, not to interrupt your reverie down sexist lane, but we're getting some strange energy fluctuations. Are the wolves moving? Uh, hard to tell. But the shadows are deepening, like our floodlights are moving. Uh, uh, the wolves are stretching. Few in perspective. This way, fraternity brothers, I think the welcome match is being extended. Uh, or we're being herded like lambs to the... <laughs> With the optimist. Judd, what are you doing? Remote tracker. We're going to need to find our way back to the umbilical at some point. If the wolves are moving... We'll need something to triangulate on. Yeah, good point. A little warning next time, huh? Ugh. I think my heart skipped a beat. Load of that. Is that a weapon? Judd? Oh, Can't figure out. Looks anything. like that massive chair cockpit from Alien. We're not in an alien movie. Oh. How do you know? No, we didn't bring a cat or any brats on this trip. Tanner. Sorry. Nerves. <laughs> Will you look at that? Wall opening up. Hey? I'm not detecting any change in radiation if we're exposed. I'm getting oxygen, nitrogen, and full Earth gravity. I can't even hear a hit. It's like there was always here. Or just appeared. Yeah. Only one way to find out. It's Adler. <sighs> hmm. Ah, strange. Smells like woods in springtime. Fresh, even. <laughs> Morning dew. No, oh, it's okay. Really. Pressure's fine, too. You're right. I can smell pine. Hey, you guys see this? What? From this angle, it's not so much of a cockpit pointing up, but... Remember that old Superman cartoon? Yeah, yeah the one with the ray gun and the mad scientist? Yeah, like that one. Look, it's, it's throwing some kind of light beam from the tip through that hole in the wall towards Earth. It's barely visible, like a sunbeam, but it's there. Yeah, I can see it. Stand back. Don't get in the way. Who knows what it does? 
Uh, can't be harmful, uh, can it? Who knows what it does up close? That's a good point. Reminds me of something. Another thing. You know when the wall opened? It's kept Earth stationary in the same spot. Black Knight not rotating away. We're keeping exactly this position with Earth in polar orbit. Yeah. Check this out. On the sides of our death ray machine... Can we not call it that? <laughs> Do you see? Some kind of engraved writing. Barely visible. Maybe some kind of instrument panel? Think about it. The walls, the floor of this ray machine, it's like memory-shaped polymer. It conforms the needs of Black Knight. The tech's amazing! How old is this thing? There's no way to be sure without taking it to a lab. Three centuries, millennia! We've got to carve out as much as possible and see Hold what Hold on, Judd. We can't dismantle this. It's beyond anything we know. Tanner, don't you see? It's worth millions, billions! Look! Just a sample. The first alien tech mankind's ever found and- We'll record everything. But we're leaving this place untouched. We can come back. It was a miracle for us to find it this time, Tanner. Don't you understand? This thing drops in and out of radar like... Like, like, like it phases out of existence. Exactly. We may never have another chance. Look, I'll just take a portion of this panel. Judd, step back. We don't know what this machine does. You said it's beaming something at the if Earth. If it was going to destroy the planet, it would have by now. This thing's been around for decades, maybe centuries. Took sense into him, Lisa. Good job. Lisa? Yes. Please talk some sense into me. Tanner, Jod's not wrong. This may be our only chance. I... I see, and... and you two... I told you he wouldn't be able to take advantage of the situation, Lise. He's lost his nerve. Lost my nerve? He used to make opportunities, Tanner. Who do you think does that for your company now? You? I think pointing that laser pistol at me is a really bad idea. I told you, Lisa. Better an accident up here. No one in question. I knew you had ambition, Judd. I just never and thought... that's the problem! You think you've been carrying me all these years? Judd! It's like I told you, Lisa. With this, Tan X could jump ahead of the competition decades! But we don't have time to argue with Tanner, him. Tanner, Judd and I... Put it down. Stop! Oh, let's drop it! No! Tanner! Uh, are you all right? He didn't hit me. Judd, you fool. You shot that machine. It stopped. The light beam's gone. It'll be easier to dismantle. Too big. You won't be there when we bring it back. Lise tried to convince me, but in the end she knew you wouldn't be up to pushing Tan X into the 21st century. Goodbye, Tanner. I'm sorry it had to be- <coughs> Lisa! Cutting it a little close, aren't you, Lisa? <sighs> sorry. I couldn't pull out my own pistol until he had his eyes on you again. You said that... I listened to your rant, Judd. But did you really think I was gonna abandon Tanner for cash? Hm? People really don't get the summer-fall romance thing, do they? To be fair, I'm younger than I look. I'm disappointed in you, Judd. We've been friends for a long time. <laughs> Rivals longer. Guess I... miscalculated. You yeah, uh, lay on your back. I, uh, I've oh, got a med kit. Your girlfriend's a better shot than either of us. We can, uh, Tanner? Uh, put your armor on me, Judd. We'll get you back to the shuttle. We can put you in stasis. Lower your vitals uh, until we get back. Tanner! Uh, what is it? Where's the Earth? What? <laughs> Look out the portal. The Earth. Where? Well, you, we must have pushed out of orbit. Uh, Spinning. Will it cheer the umbrella? No. No. Look, Tanner. The screen. The stars aren't moving. Black Knight. Black Knight hasn't moved. Then where's no, the it, Earth? It reminds me of the, the weapon. <laughs> the what? Death ray. It, 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 it's, it's not a weapon. It's a projector. Well, uh, like, how do you? How do you know? Uh, projector. Ontario. No. No. Judd. Judd. You damn fool. Hold on. He's gone, Tanner. 
I... I didn't think he'd really do it. I thought you were going to replace his blaster's power cell with a dead one. I did. Oh, he must have checked his equipment Dad. before we left. Stupid, stupid Where's fool. Where's the... Where's the Earth? What did Judd say? Planetarium? Maybe Earth never really existed. What do you mean? Judd's right. The beam. That housing it. It's like those old planetariums. Remember? They project the whole sky onto the ceiling, the stars, the planets. Like you were... Like the entire Earth was some kind of projection. You said it, Lisa. Who knows how long the Black Knight has been here? Maybe. Maybe we're all part of some immense, advanced, holographic image. But that's impossible. We're still here. Ten! We haven't disappeared. We're flesh and blood. It's okay. It's all right, Lisa. Maybe we were the only real things. Us. Humans? Maybe all life forms. Who knows? All I know is that when Judge damaged the machine, it stopped projecting an image of the Earth, creating this three-dimensional space for us to live, like, like a habitat. All those people. They're... They're... Gone. Everything. The people... The buildings, the hills, the highways, the streams, the oceans, everything, all gone. But what, what will we do? I don't know. I don't think... We can't go home. We... Tanner! The machine! It... <gasps> it's, it's starting up again. Like recycling its diagnostics. <gasps> Look! I see it. The Earth. It's back. No, 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 it's not. What do you mean? Look, look at the continents. They're all... all bunched into one. Pangea. Pangea? But that was... 300 million years ago. Then... It must have gone back to its last backed-up image. Judd's blaster must have damaged hundreds of millions of years of history. What? what will we do now? I... I... I don't know. Maybe... Maybe we start over. Lisa and Tanner will find to their amazement their shuttle still intact and an ancient past to explore below. Who knows what will remain of the world they built? Vague references and dusty texts of an ideal society. The human race built from an Adam and an Eve. And the great Terran experiment continues along the wavefront. Black Knight was written and directed by Jack J. Ward and stars Joe Stofko as Tanner, Russell Gold as Judd, Tanya Malevich as Lisa, and introduces Pete Lutz as Bass Control. Sound editing and mixing by Jack J. Ward with the assistance of Michael L. Stokes. Music by Sharon B. Black Knight is part of the Wavefront Anthology and is an Electric Vicuna production.
helps us detect that entity. Pete Lutz has left the tortoise. That's impossible. The tortoise is fully secure. Who was the other entity? Jack Ward. Bring him to the control room. We'll discover the source of this. And now, as the 400th episode of the Sonic Society is spent, we'll create a black hole using the YouTube that will devour all audio space around it, destroying it forever! The Sonic Society Season 10 is written and produced by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music provided by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society through Creative Commons licensing. The Sonic Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. We interrupt this unimportant audio for an important news broadcast. Live from the DramaPod World Headquarters, this is the Internet News with War and Peace. Hello, and thanks for dropping by and admiring my hair. Tonight's top stories, is my hair real, and can you have hair as good as mine? You can't. Also, what's going on with the Sonic Society? And, will the new zombie apocalypse destroy the world? Yesterday, at a local English school for the grammatically ungifted, one of the teachers, Mr. Mike Robes, claimed he was feeling ill and suffering from uncontrollable hungers. It was later reported by survivors he went into a zombie-like trance, started biting people, and created a rampaging horde of zombies. We go live to our reporter, Brian Adams. Thanks, Warren. I'm standing on the roof of a local convenience store, looking down on the rampaging horde of zombies below. What are they doing exactly? Not much. Quiet, Owen. I do the reporting around here. <clears throat> Sorry, Warren. It seems that some of the zombies are... Well, they seem to be walking around in circles, butting heads up against walls, and one of them seems to be kissing a parking mirror. No violence? Not eating brains or anything even... Remotely exciting? Nope. No, I don't think that's happening at all. So they are not dangerous, then? I don't know, but there's one way to find out. Owen, go down there, will you? Oh, no. I'm not going down there. Owen, go down and find out if it's safe. Look, I'm just the microphone man. There is no way I would be crazy enough to go down there. <sighs> Suppose you're right. Well, can you at least check the edge to make sure there are no zombies trying to climb up? All right, but you better not push me. Wouldn't dream of it. Even I saw that one coming. Ow! What the hell did you do that for? Here they come. Oh, my God! What? Tell us what's happening. They seem to be... Yes? Uh, he's fine. They seem to be poking and prodding him, and one even seems to be tickling him. They seem fairly harmless, Warren. I'm going down. Our next top story, 
the Sonic Society. Over to you, Brian. Thanks, Warren. People get congratulated all the time, but very rarely amongst a horde of zombies. We would like to congratulate Jack Ward and David Alt for the Sonic Society and their 10 years of podcasting on the internet. Ah, these zombies look awfully hungry. Uh, They're fine, honest. Okay, then. So, congratulations to your show. Here's to your 10 years and the next 10. Oh, and are you sure? Relax. They're totally harmless. <laughs> They're eating him, Warren. Uh, back, back to the newsroom. Uh. Oh, dear. There you have it, folks. Dyslexic zombies don't eat brains, but actually, Brian's. So if you're a Brian, quickly get your name changed. Also, a special shout-out to the Sonic Society for their great podcasts from the Drama Pod. Keep up the great work. I'm Warren Peace, and my hair is real.